little to the right. There's the light. Okay, I would like to call this meeting to order. Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker. Here. Mr. Cummings. Here. Ms. Gloss. Here. Mrs. Herrick. Here. Mr. Hong. Mrs. Reese. Here. And President Lax. Here. We have a quorum. Please rise to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the rights of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed and acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the East Brunswick Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the East Brunswick Board of Education offices. Written notice was also provided to the Sentinel, the New York Star-Ledger, the Home News Tribune, the Alternative Press of East Brunswick, and the Municipal Clerk of East Brunswick. All Board of Education meetings, with the exception of executive session discussions, are videotaped for a later broadcast. It is the policy of the Board of Education that videotaped meetings are not edited for any purposes. Individuals who speak at the Board's public meetings should be aware of these videotaping rules. Good evening. Welcome, everyone. At this time, I am going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Giuliano, who will be conducting the interviews. I hope we will make a good time. Good evening. This meeting is for the interview of candidates to fill two vacancies on the Board of Education. The selected candidates seated before us are Pankaj Goswami, Heather James, Wilbur Pan, Nusrat Sohail, and Ann Seng. Jack Levitt is also invited to attend. Uh, we were advised that he is running late. Prior to the meeting, each candidate's name was placed in individual canisters, and those canisters were played in, placed in a drawing box from which each name was drawn. The order in which each name was drawn is the order in which candidates will be initially called upon and then rotated through to either make a statement or respond to questions. Each candidate will be called upon when it is her or his turn to respond. To the candidates, when you were invited to be interviewed, you were apprised of the interview format, that questions would be asked, and that you would be allotted two minutes to respond to each question. The questions were not shared with you in advance. Before we begin with questions, you each have one minute to make an opening statement describing why you are interested in becoming a member of the Board of Education and discussing why the board should select you to fill the vacancy. We'll begin with Mr. Goswami. So I am Pankaj Goswami. I am resident of East Brunswick for the last four years. Uh, I work for uh, IT services, and I want the board to select me because I have, the, I have my kids study here, and I am looking forward to serve the community, the school, the teachers, the students, and the fellow board members to help them to make East Brunswick as one of the best school districts. And I moved to East Brunswick because of the school district, which is 546th ranking in the entire America and 36th in, in the U.S., in the New Jersey. So I would like the board to consider me because I also would like to support the East Brunswick School District being a South Asian also because there are 40 to 15 percent of the South Asian students studying here who might need some guidance where I can help the teachers, where I can help the board to help and support and take it forward. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goswami. Next, Mr. Levitt. One minute for your opening statement. So as many of you, all of you know, I've been involved with the schools for quite a while now. I've been with the East Brunswick Education Foundation for about 17 or 18 years. Been president for a lot of that time, and I've put a succession plan in place because I've taken the foundation to where I think I can take it. It's time for some new leadership to take over, but I am still passionate about the schools in East Brunswick. I think that um, it is an amazing community, and I think the schools are the, I believe Mr. Wu, Mr. Hong said it, um, they are the crown jewel of East Brunswick. And I still feel I have a lot to give. It's a very exciting time. It's also a challenging time in education in New Jersey, and I feel I have a lot to add, and I'm not done yet. So 
I hope to be sitting in one of those chairs when we're done with this process. Thank you, Mr. Levitt. Mr. Pan. Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, thanks to everybody for taking the time for this uh, uh, process. I'm very humbled and honored to be part of this uh, this group. Um, my, my take is that we have an embarrassment of riches here to uh, choose from. Um, we've been living in New Brunswick, oh, sorry, East Brunswick for uh, 20 years. Uh, we moved here in 2004. Um, we, uh, my wife and I joke that for our older son James's first birthday, we bought him a house, um, and we moved here. Uh, because of the excellent school system uh, here. That was top in our priorities in terms of looking for a place to live uh, and raise kids and, and, and have a family. Um, and you know, we're witnesses to that. Um, our, our older son is graduated from the high school now. Our younger son is a junior in the high school uh, now. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I do see is that there are challenges to the school system uh, coming up in the near future and for the uh, foreseeable future. It's not is nothing uh, new, but I think I do have uh, the skill set and the enthusiasm and the uh, wish to maintain that. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Pan. Ms. Tseng, you're next. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for inviting me. I am also very honored to be here with a group of talented candidates. Um, the reason I'm here is simply because I want to give back. I've been in this community since 1995. Um, actually, before I was married. Um, so I've, I've seen how the community has grown. I raised two kids going through the school district to witness how wonderful it is. Um, it is a very different time now. There is a lot to do. I hope the, um, the board will select me only if I am a good fit um, with, a group of, um, with a group here, I think, that to get the job done. Um, if there is something that you think that I can contribute from what I've said here, what my background is, and it's a good fit for the group, then I would like to join and do something for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zeng. Next, Ms. James. Hello, thank you so much. I, like everyone else, I'm honored to be here with you this evening. I also purchased my first home here in East Brunswick so that my son could attend our Blue Ribbon Public Schools. And I am applying for this vacancy because I truly believe in the transformative power of public education. As a public college professor, I am an educator myself. <coughs> and I have been volunteering in the schools since my son was in kindergarten. I was a PTA room parent his first year. And then when he was in first and second grade, I was on the Warren Stopper Executive PTA Board as Vice President of Cultural Arts. In that role, I worked with the principal and with faculty to plan assemblies. And I worked with other PTAs to collaborate across schools so that we could all do assemblies together and have programming that really supported and augmented the curriculum. When my son was in third and fourth grade, I served as Warren Stopper's PTA President and among other things, help fundraise for a new sound system for our cafetorium. And I'd really love to continue my volunteer work here. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sohan. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to come here and speak about myself and uh, why this uh, position is important for me to serve. Um, I came from Pakistan 25 years ago with my two daughters and came directly here to East Brunswick and enjoyed the school system immensely. We came here mainly it was a blue ribbon district and we wanted to uh, see our daughters excel. And while they were in school, I got engaged with the school PDA and other um, uh, parent uh, activities and I was awe stricken in my first year what the school system was offering to my uh, daughters and I immediately went to grad school. Uh, so it's East Brunswick that inspired me to become educator in America and uh, then I became, uh, I taught for 10 years in public schools. Um, after that I switched gears to get my license in educational leadership and then I transformed to work. Um, uh, sorry. So I think as we proceed, I'll give you a hand signal. Okay. And we have 10 seconds left. Oh, gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, well, on to the first question. The board is a consensus-seeking group. 
Respect is the driving force behind our process of discussion, consideration, debate, and conclusion. Please share your thoughts on how you would partner with us throughout the consensus process. We go to Mr. Levitt. One of the reasons I want to join the board is because um, they operate as a consensus seeking group. I am um, I'm an executive coach. I build teams in organizations where um, wherever I'm working. I even wrote a book on building teams. And the only form of decision making that I advocate with my clients and in my book is consensus. Um, the majority rules thing leaves somebody out. It doesn't have buy-in. And if you're going to move forward, you're not going to be able to get everybody's full heart in the decision. Um, so I believe that everybody needs to have their voice heard. Um, I'm going to, I'll be very candid, I have opinions and I will be sharing them. But it's also important that everybody recognize that it's only important that your opinions are heard and considered. But if there are better opinions that are out there, you need to accept that they are better and get behind it. Once the board walks out of that room after making a decision, it doesn't matter who had what opinion, everybody has the same opinion. And that's the voice that the community needs to hear and the face the community needs <coughs> to see. Um, respect, I think that um, I've met everybody on the board and I, have, I do respect them. I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't think I could work with the group of people who are there. I know that this has been a very sensitive issue in the past. It was very sad to watch what happened at some board meetings. And um, whoever gets chosen, I really hope that we never see disrespect like that again because I've seen this board work in fantastic ways as a unit, and I'd love to be part of it. Thank you. Mr. Pan. Uh, sorry, can you remind me one, one minute? Certainly. Oh, oh, uh, I mean, we, I, I have one minute. You have two right? minutes. Two minutes. Oh, two minutes, okay, yes. Great. Okay. Um, uh, consensus is really important in terms of uh, the things that I've done throughout uh, my life. Um, and I'd like to highlight just uh, two of the uh, probably most salient um, uh, experiences that I've uh, had. So I'm a pediatric oncologist, which I found is usually a conversation stopper and probably it doesn't uh, uh, seem to apply here. But one of the roles that I had as faculty at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School is that I was the clerkship director for the pediatrics rotation that all the third year students um, uh, go through. Um, as in that role, um, I've uh, had a lot of experience dealing with an educational system with multiple moving parts where you know, I have to deal with and negotiate with and work with, most importantly, um, people in other fields that I actually don't have a whole lot of direct con control over. Um, I think I was very successful at that, um, at that role um, given the uh, success that our students who were interested in pediatrics had in the match process when they graduated from uh, medical school. But I've had that experience in the past. My current uh, role, I work uh, in the pharmaceutical uh, business now doing clinical trials. Uh, for breast cancer, um, and as part of that, my team is what uh, is referred to in business speak as a matrix organization. What that means is that there are a lot of stakeholders that are involved in the development and running of these trials, all with different skill sets. And, um, and it being a matrix organization, again, I have to uh, know how to work with these people um, and in these different functional areas, uh, even though no one is a direct report uh, to me. Um, those of you who are administrators, um, I am lucky enough to have actually zero direct reports right now, and that is completely awesome. Uh, but ha uh, having said all that, I think um, those are the experiences that I've had, um, the most two, two most important that I can think of right now in terms of um, being able to build consensus and work with a team and work in a complex organization with lots of moving parts. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Sank. Yes, um, I think everybody has said a lot about their experiences and we all have some experience reading consensus working as a team. Um, but what I, think it's most, what I think is most important in order to do that is to be a good listener um, and to be open-minded and flexible. We all having a lot of like experiences to draw from. Um, based on those experiences, we might have different point of view. 
So it's important to be open, listen, and really listen and get into what the other person's saying. Um, it's easier said that than to say that put yourself in other people's shoes, but we have to constantly remind ourselves to do that. And then um, give people, I guess, benefit of the doubt and think about that, um, that your proposed solution, um, maybe one of it, may not be best of it, and give people benefit of doubt to, um, to try. Um, and it's important to, um, to rally behind whatever the decision the board decides. And that's, I think, um, the power of a group than the power of a single person. So that's what I think, um, to me, is how to do that. We all know we need to do that, but that's how I would do it. Thank you. Ms. James. Thank you. So I see myself as a consensus builder, and I'd love to use that skill set here. I think my six years as a PTA volunteer in part showcased that. Sometimes when you're on a PTA board, parents will come to you with very disparate ideas, very closely held priorities, and they don't always align. And you have to figure out how to put that all together in service of the greater community. And when you serve on a board, whether it's educationally focused or not, you know, sometimes good people, they have different ways of operating. They have different ideas. And you do need to be a listener and accept multiple perspectives. And I think it's important to know that sometimes your idea, like your idea for where the bus stop should go, <laughs> might not always be the best one. But you're going to find a compromise, and you're going to work diligently until you do that, right? And you're going to be open to learning and to being a participant. I see myself as someone who's solutions-oriented, and in my career, I really bring that to the classroom as well. I mean, I teach government and politics, right? So. We're talking about polemic stuff. You all know that. And my students come from all walks of life. They have very different ideas. But I tell them, this is a safe space. Don't focus on the controversy. Focus on the space where we can actually push this conversation forward and find that solution that's going to be good for everyone, right? Be a problem solver, because that's what it means to learn. Um, and I think that you know you can have respectful disagreements and always look for that space for collaboration. And I would definitely love to have the opportunity uh, to work with a consensus building board and to be a part of that, um, doing that here for East Brunswick. Because I do believe that you know volunteering is what makes our community great. And that volunteering for the schools in particular is something very special. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. James. Ms. Sohan. Okay, so my colleagues have said quite a bit. Uh, I would resonate with <coughs> most of their feelings. I run a nonprofit women to women forum, and we have nine community leaders, and they are many of them are young uh, women, and we practice collective leadership. This is what we believe in, and um, I honestly feel that um, each strong head can have different opinion but they can come in partnership towards collective goals. And over the period of time, you learn to accept the differences. And you move ahead with them when you, you realize maybe at some point you're not right, but the other two are right. So this partnership, this understanding with the, your uh, peers, with your colleagues, is what you need to know. Uh, one of the skills that uh, my colleague Anne has mentioned, listening skills. We really need to be good listeners um, to understand what their perspective is and maybe our perspective may vary because of good listening skills. Um, uh, I am basically known to be a team player among my colleagues uh, because I'm very flexible and um, I believe it would not be a difficult task for me to partner with my colleagues if I'm there on the board with them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Goswami. So when you say consensus, right, I play a role of a product manager where I have built a lot of products in the banking financial services, which is my profession. So we most of the time we come into rooms where we close the room and we discuss and decide and come to a consensus. Because when we develop products, today we use mobile. We have 
developed multiple features in the mobile through the bank for the banks to give it to the public right so when i when i do these things this is first of all a team player also listener and also when you say designer because i have designed so much products it helps a, helps the public and it helps the bank to bring in lot of money so now coming to the team player thing i have formed cricket board in east brunswick which is again a game of team which is team 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 again bringing bringing lot of uh, community things i have i am a community leader here in east brunswick i have successfully implemented a successful diwali last year which is a huge event which bought a successful thing and then because of that i am going to celebrate another successful event in next 10 days which i expect anticipate around 1500 to 2000 people okay so this is called a confidence on people when you show something rather than talk because pictures speak more than words you cannot just talk 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 and don't do anything you show that okay i can prove then the people bring in the trust and when you do something talk something then people believe you not just by showing something to the people and again uh, when i when i say about the people thing i am a part of multiple four organizations where i this those are not for profit i i run as a vice president there and there are multiple things i do blood camps i do cpr camps i do uh, uh, christmas gift donations for the hospitals so these are all community things when you do this people know you so when you people know you they have trust and they have confidence and they come to consensus easily rather than you have to do a lot of hard work to get into the consensus thank you okay during an interview we are often asked what are your greatest strengths? What could you tell us in regard to something that would be a potential challenge for yourself in becoming part of a team? We'll begin with Mr. Pan. Ooh. <laughs> this is always a tough one. <laughs> um, I th uh, so, off the top of my head, one, um, again, I recognize that the East Brunswick Public School System is a very large, very complex organization. Um, and the decisions that are made by the Board of Ed um, are going to be relatively high stakes um, because they affect everybody in town in many ways that um, are obvious, many ways that are not obvious. Um, I think in terms of um, the challenge for myself in regards to uh, being a member of uh, the Board of Education would first just and be getting the knowledge base down uh, to really understand the system that, that we have here. Um, and here, I will quote what I said. I, I alluded to it before that I um, ran the pediatric clerkship director at Robert Wood um, uh, for a, uh, close to a decade. And my, on my very first day, my new admin, um, uh, Angela Hornsby, came up to me and said, so Dr. Pan, what do you want to uh, do? And I said, my plan is to do whatever the heck you tell me to do for the next six months while I figure this thing out. Um, and that's how I would approach that, uh, that particular challenge in, in regards to the, um, uh, in regards to my role on the Board of Education should I be appointed. We have a lot of experience here, not just in this room, but with, throughout the whole school district. And uh, I would be planning on uh, talking to you guys and talking to as many people as possible in order to um, really get a good understanding of the school system. Uh, so that I can help uh, to make the best decisions for all parties concerned. Thank you. Mr. Sain. In terms of um, <coughs> strength, um, I would say uh, I've worked mainly in the professional service job and I'm a relatively technical person um, so I, my strengths would be um, that I'm pretty much a doer. I just wanted to do things, and I'm very much on uh, getting things done. Um, I think I'm very resourceful. I like to think I'm resourceful. Um, creative, as much creative as an accountant can be. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I like creative ideas, um, even in the professional training space, that's what I'm currently working in. Um, and I'm also, hopefully, a little bit humorous. I think that we all need a little bit of uh, humor in our life. At the end of the day, we're here 
um, with a purpose, um, but we we don't want to take things too personal and too serious, and we wanted to everybody to have a light heart. Um, in terms of challenge, I would say my challenge, if I was on the board, is advocating um, for what I do. I guess right now is advocating for myself. Um, I'm not very good at, at that. I would say um, so. I do give credit to people I'm working with, I'm working together, um, but I don't do a good job in advocating what we do because I feel like I always believe in the numbers and the things we do, the fact speaks for itself, but um, I also know now that sometimes a narrative wouldn't, help, wouldn't hurt, it would help. Um, so that would be, I say, a challenge is to to like um, come up with a good story, um, describe what we've done, and to do that. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. James. Well, this is an incredibly talented group of people, which I think really speaks to what we have here at East Brunswick, and I think any of us would have no problem talking about all the ways that we could be successful. But in terms of something that might be more of a challenge for me personally, you know, I would say I don't have personal experience with older children in the schools because I haven't gotten to that part of my journey yet, right? I will, but it's not my current perspective. And of course, our life experiences shape how we all think and what our knowledge base is. And I think for me, I would approach that challenge by really learning and seeking expert input, seeking input from the board as many members of the board do have older children or have had older children uh, that have gone through the East Brunswick school system. I would definitely approach it by listening and I'm not afraid of work, <laughs> you know, I'm not afraid to be here and show up and just uh, keep trying until whatever the challenge is gets figured out. Um, and I recognize because I have served in many volunteer capacities throughout my life and because I do work in education that sometimes there are challenges that you don't anticipate, right? I mean, we're talking about transforming children's lives, but we're also talking about, you know, working within a larger public policy context and we don't have control over every single thing that happens. So. I think being adaptable and being someone who can just, um, as I said, keep working and keep listening and keep learning from experts is something that's really important. I know that this work is harder than just what I see, right? I've, I've, <laughs> I've founded nonprofits and served on boards and I get that there's challenges that I can't foresee, but I feel like I wouldn't be here if I wasn't ready to take that on. Couldn't have timed that better. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Sohail. Okay, so um, I'm basically an educator and I love what I do and did. Um, there are a lot of pointers that I was writing. I was a curriculum designer, grant writer, um, I have worked internationally, so I can build up with the support of definitely instructional staff, cross cultural interaction programs, or um, uh, a youth uh, development projects in terms of engaging community uh, alumni, bringing alumni leaders to expose the role models to our high schoolers. And I've worked on those programs as being the um, uh, principal of a local Islamic school in the neighborhood. In fact, some of my uh, students from that school are now in EBHS and they're shining. Our Muslim Student Association's student is, um, the, the president is uh, right now at EBHS. So I personally believe that, you know, I am not just an educator, but I'm also a community developer. I have a lot of community affiliations. Uh, one is my own organization. The other one I'm serving in HRC as one of the oldest member there. So I've built up these uh, interactive, cross-cultural, uh, academic, only community-driven, multiple programs. And I feel that is my strength. But the potential challenge that we all are talking about is getting to know this uh, immense structure where you all are sitting. So uh, this policy making, these details that you uh, all know and have worked on so far is something that 
I may need some time to understand and then work on. Thank you. Mr. Goswami. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, my strength is that I am a father of an honor student of East Brunswick Public School. So that automatically gives me strength after strength. And uh, when you say hard working, right, I never see my watch when I work. Okay, what is the time now? Most of the people in East Brunswick knows, okay, anywhere they go, they see Pankaj. That means Pankaj is available everywhere. So they, he doesn't see watch, he doesn't see time. Family always fights why you are not at home because I always support the community and go and work for the community and do as much as possible. I do multiple events, which is community event, which takes a lot of my time. To, to deliver an event is not a something which you can deliver over, overnight. It takes months of efforts. When I'm doing this Diwali or Holi, it takes six months of efforts to go talk, beg mon money from the people because when you go to beg a hundred dollars, it is very tough to get. But when people come to you, they expect you give $500. But when you go for $500, nobody gives you. So the strength is like that. And then I am friendly. And I recognize people. I was a leader in my, comp in my company where I, I, I re 1,500 people reported to me. So I also recognize, I also make friendship when we work. And also make feel the people that, OK, don't treat me as a boss. Treat me as a friend and tell, share with me how I can help you. Just not come with your issues and think, okay, if I go to my boss, what he will think? Just come with your issues and make me as a friend and talk to me. And again, uh, I am into sports, cricket. I am into arts and culture. I'm part of the board of EB Arts Coalition. I, I am an IT product, so I know IT. I can help in any form of IT things. I am a financial guy. I am an MBA in finance. I am a budgeting guy. I know budgeting, which I can help and contribute to, to any of the budgeting efforts. And then weakness, I will say, Emotional. Earlier when I, I this is, it was my weakness, but I have worked towards it to see. Earlier I used to think from my heart. But I think it is always not worth when you are in the business. You have to think from the brain. Thank you. And Mr. Levin. Kudos to whoever thought up this question. It's a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming from an organization where I have been there for 18 years. I know all the moving parts. I help create the moving parts. I am able to give input into all the moving parts. Granted, it's a much smaller organization than um, the entire district, but I, I know all the moving parts. Each year we start from square one and we move on to the end of the year and then we come back to the beginning of, in September, come back to the beginning. Contrast that with joining the board. The board is a moving train that is moving at a pretty fast clip. So jumping on to a moving train, I'm starting from zero when everybody else has a lot more experience under their belt. So that's a position I'm not quite used to. Um, I am going to need to do a lot of catching up. If I were to talk about what my biggest challenge is, my biggest challenge is that I want to um, contribute from minute one and know everything from that minute. So it's going to take some some patience on my part. Um, I'm very familiar with the district, but I realize that what I see is the end product out there when I'm looking at the district. I don't know exactly what goes into making the sausage. So a lot of things go on behind the scenes that I'm not aware of and I know it's a process and learning the process, being part of the process and really feeling familiar with everything that goes into it is, is going to be my challenge because I'm going to want to run before I walk. Thank you. We've all heard the saying, the Board of Education doesn't run the district, it ensures that it is well run. Another way to look at this is that a board member is an, ad, is an ambassador for their school district. What would make you a viable ambassador for our diverse group of residents? We'll begin with Ms. Tseng. Um, let me think for a second, an ambassador. So I think of a, a board as um, if I 
would draw an analogy, the board would be like in the filmmaking, it would be the screenwriter and the producer. So being part of the screenwriter and the producer, an ambassador's job would be to work with the director, which would be the superintendent, um, to ensure that the administrators have the best resource to work with the cast, the crew, um, to put the screen, to put, put, put the, the script to life on screen. The, as an ambassador, we need to advocate for our past producers and cast we need to um, provide a vision um, for the district, and we need to collaborate um, with the film team to put the best show. At the end of the day, we serve our student, family, the community with that in mind. That's how to be the best ambassador, I suppose. Ms. James. Thank you. I think I would be a good ambassador because as I said in my opening, I truly believe in the transformative power of education. I am the first person in my family to attend college. I did not have the privilege of going to a K-12 school that had the resources of East Brunswick, the diversity of East Brunswick, the opportunity for my son to eat dosa at lunch and for everyone to think it's just fabulous. I mean, I don't have to pretend because I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here like all of you and I think part of being an ambassador is having that like faith in, in what you're doing and knowing that you're representing something that yes there are challenges but it's a good place and you want to be part of making it better and helping it grow and seeing our future, right? I want to be productive and I have a track record of doing that with the PTAs. You know, I, I felt like an ambassador for Warren Suffer, my <laughs> former treasurer is here because I basically lived there, I mean, and I just always sought to bring people in and to be as transparent as possible where I could to encourage people to get involved. And, they were interested, you know, my identity would be, you know, as a parent and, and as a helper and as someone who, who wants to help the schools um, run well. And, and you know, I, I want to be around and work in the community in, in multifaceted ways. And I think that an ambassador is present, an ambassador is communicative, an ambassador listens and takes in knowledge, um, and an ambassador works in, in good faith. And so I hope I could do that here. Thank you. Ms. Um, all right, so being ambassador means representing some people, or maybe uh, a lot of people. Um, I'm already part of HRC, and over there I'm already being an ambassador of uh, South Asian community, Asian community, and minority and immigrant community. And, uh, and I can add on and on and on. Muslim community. Uh, uh, so I, I believe that I'm already serving in that role in EBHRC. So uh, transforming that role here would not be that difficult for me um, uh, because I uh, feel East Brunswick is becoming a world village. It's, uh, it has become a world village. If you go to high school, you will see so many different ethnicities. And I honestly feel that that needs to represent more in this uh, board as well. Um, and that's what my contributions would be, <coughs> that you know, I will be bringing a diverse role, diverse thought process, and uh, uh, maybe a different creative type of thinking that maybe my background, my credentials, my experiences of life, being internationally, uh, uh, growing up, and then living in East Brunswick, and uh, becoming who I become today because of being as part of EB with my uh, differentiated experiences. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Goswami. 
So when you say ambassador, ambassador means people trust you, then only you become ambassador. Otherwise, you cannot become ambassador. You have to have a trust of other people. And when you are doing so much things in that community, automatically you are ambassador of the township. Not only township, you are the ambassador of your community, you are ambassador of the people whom you spend time, whom you don't spend, but they know you. Many a times, if you see, if you know, the president, we know the president. Does the president know me? No. So it is like that. People will know you. You might not know many people, but people will know you. So ambassador thing, giving back is also very important. When they see you are doing so much, you are giving back to the community, they build the trust because this guy is dedicated. This guy is just not the guy who will go 9 to 5 office, come spend time with family, sleep, eat dinner and sleep. Not like that. Who is giving back? That is the guy who is a, who people trust and he can become the ambassador. And again, East Brunswick schools are fostering the, you miss the board, is fostering and giving the opportunity to the town and the people and the students and the teachers that opportunity to strive and they do better. And that's why also many people coming from different towns and settling here. It is just not like that the houses are not, the, the realtor tells me only there are 500 houses demand but there is only 50 available. That means what? People are coming and houses are not there. So everybody wants to come to a town and when you go and talk, when I do an event, People come here not only from East Brunswick, people come from Old Bridge, South River, Milltown, Edison, everywhere. So why? Because we are building this town in such a way that people think, oh, why not East Brunswick? So East Brunswick is one of the places where we want to do best things, support the school, make the school top in the nation, and work with all the peers to work and help them and how they can also, where I can contribute for the betterment of the school community and the schools. Mr. Leonard. Lived in this community for, I guess, close to 25 years and have gotten to know it quite well. And we are a diverse community. We're ethnically and religiously diverse. We are socioeconomically diverse. We're neurally, neurodiverse. And we're intellectually diverse. And what I love about our schools is that we are there for every one of these populations. We have families moving in to East Brunswick because we have special education programs that surrounding towns don't offer. We have um, programs for um, AP programs and um, dual, dual enrollment programs for students who are excelling and we address every population that is in each of our buildings. Um, there is not any one student that any of us would look at. We look at all 9,000 or so students, and that's what's the most, the most important outlook to take for the board. In terms of being an ambassador, um, anybody who has seen me around town knows if you put a microphone in my hand, I am very um, shamelessly bragging about what our schools do. Um, if you were at our um, bear crawl, I was there with our microphone just, you know, raving about how many people showed up and what the money we we're going to raise is able to do for our students. Come, I've come and stood over there and bragged about the money that we have given to our students because we have teachers and students who can create the most amazing things given the opportunity. So being an ambassador for me is just a continuation of the role just in a different, with a different title and a different, um, slightly different voice, but I am through and through, even though I wasn't born in East Brunswick, but I think if I went to lab for, they would find some green in my blood. Um, and Mr. Bass. Um, I have some recurring nightmares. I'm adding talking about being an ambassador after Jack Levitt to that list. <laughs> um, so, um, so where I grew up um, is a, a town called Flossmoor, Illinois. It's the south suburb of, of Chicago. Um, Homewood Flossmoor High School is the uh, school district uh, that, that, that I went to. Um, and it's very much like um, East Brunswick. I was quite surprised the first time I saw the uh, high school building because I thought I was looking at my old high school, uh, except everything was green instead of red because you know, those were our, uh, our colors. But uh, one of the things that made uh, growing up in, in that town, um, and that town was known as the place to go if you wanted your kids to get a good education, much like East Brunswick, um, was that um, I was 
one of five Chinese kids in the entire uh, high school. Um, that's four times 750 kids per class, and one of those kids was my brother. So um, growing up in that environment, um, I think one of the, if, if I have a superpower, it's being, it, it was being able to learn to relate to people that were not like myself, because I was forced to do it every, uh, every day. Um, as a result for that, um, I think I've developed a pretty decent sense of empathy. Hopefully being a physician has uh, helped out with that as well. And where I'm going with all of this stuff is that when it comes to being an ambassador, um, you need to be enthusiastic. And I do fanboy a lot about the stuff that I'm enthusiastic about. And I'm enthusiastic about education, as I hope I'm uh, making, making clear. But you also have to be able to read and understand your audience. Um, and that's where I think um, my life experience um, and my ability to put myself in the other person's shoes uh, can, uh, can really help in that uh, regard. <coughs> One of the things that I do um, as well is I teach the RCIA course at St. Bart's. Um, and one, one of the things I have to do is figure out how to get the message we're trying to get to each individual person when I have six, six different people in the room. And one message is not going to uh, fit all. So that's what I would do. Thanks. Thank you. Next question. What role do you feel the district should play in the East Brunswick community and please identify an opportunity for improvement. Ms. James. Oh, first for that one. <laughs> okay. Everyone gets a turn. <laughs> well, you know, when you say what role should the schools play in the community, I guess that's an interesting framing for me because I don't know that I see them as separate, right? I mean, we, we are a community and the schools are the community and I mean I think so many of us started speaking about you know we came here specifically for the schools and that has shaped and was the beginning of our community experience I guess I don't really see the two as distinct but of course I understand that you know the Board of Education and administration is, is one body and there are obviously a lot of other entities in the community as well um, and I think one area of improvement that I, I hope that I would be able to help with as an ambassador, right, since ambassadors engage in dialogue, is just bringing parents more into your work. I mean, I know for me, until I started coming here to testify about an issue that my neighborhood had with our transportation system, um, I, I didn't realize how many committees there were and how many opportunities there were to be involved in the board. And, and I think all of us who are up here, we have this diverse array of community experiences. Like during COVID, I helped found the East Brunswick Educational Justice Alliance and it was parents from across different schools and, and we talked about you know our concerns with what diverse parents were experiencing in the community and we actually got to work with Dr. Figueroa on uh, one of the surveys that you all did to see people's experience and I was just really amazed by, by how much is already here, right? Or even knowing about some of the special education parent advisory groups that I wasn't at first aware of. And so I think that if we can um, bring more people in, that would help. Thank you. Ms. Sohan? Um, I think the district is already doing a very good job engaging community. And as uh, 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 Ms. Uh, James mentioned that she, that our, we are the community that is in school, our children are in the school. Um, however, I mean, a few things I was thinking about it last night too, that how, if I would be there, what can I uh, bring in? Or like as a community me member, what can I bring in even if I'm not on the board? So I try to look up alumni list on Wikipedia. And I've seen there is a huge list, but uh, at least 50% of them were sports leaders and they are serving in sports leadership. Um, but I did not see as many academic leaders. I know my daughter went to uh, Spotify to work and she did really great. She's nowhere on the list. And I honestly would like to see alum our alumni, PBHS's alumni, to work more closely 
with our students to give them this ray of hope that if they can do it, the others can also do it too. Uh, that's what I just feel one part that I came across. Otherwise, you all are doing a very good job. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Goswami. Okay, so the main thing is the board is anyway doing good. That's why I want to part, be part of this board. Otherwise, I would not be here. Right. So uh, the thing is, I will see two things which can be improved, means which can be done, which will help. One is more more parent teacher engagement, right? So because I know the teachers are really doing a lot, but if there are more engagement with the teachers and parents, then parents also can help the teacher to succeed in their roles more. Because I know 15 or 16 te students, one teacher cannot help. That is too much for them. Because in my st my son's class, what I have observed, they can definitely. Uh, if there are more engagement, that will be helpful. Another thing which I feel I don't know whether it is relevant or not. Always pizza, pizza, pizza. Fridays. Why can't be Asian food? Why can't? Maybe once a week can be a different coming cushion, right, for the kids. I don't want my son to have a pizza every every Friday because it is cholesterol. It can it can hurt them in the future. Not today, but they love it. But maybe a introduction of a different food menu in the cafeteria can be helpful because even a Indian kid or American kid or any kid, they out of the school they go to Asian food, order Chinese or order Italian, but in the school they only get a sandwich or a pizza. There is no option. And my son never eats it. And I don't I cannot cook and send food for him to school every day. So this is one two things what I say, but any other than that, everything is perfect in his birth with the school district. That's why I agree. Thank you. Mr. Levitt. One thing I've always found slightly puzzling about East Brunswick is that we have so many different organizations. Um, we have the seniors, we have the Arts Commission, we have the Human Relations Commission, we have the Library Foundation, we have the clergy um, council, but they all operate somewhat as islands. Um, now I've heard that the school district is thinking about going out for a referendum next year, something about a new high school or something like that. Um, the community needs to be one community if we're going to do this, and I think it has to start somewhere, and if our district could become part of each of these organizations by bringing out our best our best asset, which is our students. Um, a great example is um, last week for the eclipse, we had some high schoolers act as ambassadors. They went to the library. They went to one of the um, one of the pre the daycare places, and they taught and taught students about the eclipse. It was all over tap, and it was a feel good moment for the community, and it's a feel good moment for the school that the schools led. If we could unleash the talent we have in these, um, in these 11 buildings on the community and really let them feel part of what goes on inside those buildings, I think when we go for a referendum, it's going to be a slam dunk to get everybody to say, yes, we need a new high school because we are one community. Thank you. Mr. Penn? Yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> um, the role that the school district plays in the town, I think the town is the school district and vice versa, um, for many reasons that we've already uh, talked about, not the least of which, that education is often the number one reason why people come to East Brunswick to, um, uh, to live. Um, having said that, there are sectors of the community where that message seems to not be at the forefront of their uh, minds. I hate to admit it, but they're um, uh, friends of ours that um, have gone down the well, why should I pay taxes to the school district if my kids are out of school uh, now? Um, I've tried to set them straight and point out the flaws in their thinking. There I am being an ambassador. <laughs> um, but um, but I, I do think that if there's uh, one thing that I would like to uh, concentrate on is um, showing the importance of the school district to the parts of town that, quote, do not directly get anything out of the school district um, 
uh, at, at this point in time. Uh, because the thing is, a school district means you have healthy, vibrant families in, the, in, in town. If you have healthy, vibrant families in town, quality of life is better, the activities that you have in town are better, your prop, uh, property values remain at least stable or you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully going up. All of these things are a direct result of our school district being as ex excellent as it is. And that's a message that I think um, need, uh, could sure use getting out to a wider, to a wider audience. Thank you. Okay. And Ms. Tseng. Um I see the district and the community as um, symbiotic partners. I think their two ecosystems supports each other. Um, our district provides the backbone of education opportunity, and our district are responsible for educating the next generation of residents. And the community obviously supports us with um, funding and also advocacy. The area where I see opportunity to improve um, the one that jumps to my mind would be the um, what Mr. Levitt had mentioned, um, advocating for the value of our district to the broader group of residents. Um, one area we've done well, and I remember resonate with me, was Parent University. Um, I think that in the ever-changing, fast-changing um, society we're in, um, there is a lot of opportunity for our students, the resource that we have, to provide that sort of um, um, education and information um, platform for our residents. Um, you know, the AIs, the technology, the cultural, um, all those areas that we can improve on. And, um, and give our students the opportunity to volunteer and then to present our district as valuable asset to the community so that, um, so that all different um, groups of community will rally behind us um, when we need their support. And that's how I, I see ourselves um, of two ecosystems that will work together well. Thank you. Okay. Well, as we end the interview session, you each have one minute to make a closing statement. And we'll begin with Ms. Sohail. Okay. So, uh, okay. uh, at this point, I would say that if I, I have become what I am today, as I have said earlier, because of what I got exposed in East Brunswick right in my first year of being here. And I became an educator, I became a community uh, organizer, and uh, build up uh, myself professionally, personally, due to experiences what I have gained here through my daughters uh, who went to school system. And I love to serve the community, and I have been serving the community. I have uh, uh, enough knowledge of, of serving as an educator in public schools, as an educator in the leadership. I have the license in, uh, 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 of New Jersey uh, to be a, an administrator. I felt that I have learned enough to now take it to next level and uh, serve at um, the uh, Board of Education level to, um, uh, if I've been given that, that opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Goswami. Okay, so uh, I would uh, like to thank everyone for giving me an opportunity to come here and present myself. So I would love to give back and work collaboratively, collaboratively with everyone, all the board members, parents, teachers, teachers and the students and help them to succeed in what they are aiming for and also uh, try to enhance the well-being of our schools and the community and the growth and success of our schools. And I look forward, if you guys think about me, to work, come work and support you in the next East Brunswick schools, how to become the top in the country. Mr. Levitt. Thanks again for inviting me here today. And sorry I ran in at the last minute. There was a little traffic in Philadelphia. Um, I'm glad I made it on time. 
in short, I love our schools. Our schools have been wonderful to my family, and I feel this intense need to pay it forward. Um, I bring some experience um, to the job, too. Um, I've run a business, sold a business. Um, I'm a te I, now I'm an educator at Rutgers. Um, passionate about teams, and I love to volunteer. All those things, I think, contribute to being a good board member. By the way, um, Ms. Sohail, I would love to invite you to the Alumni Hall of Fame that we have at East Brunswick High School to show you what great things our alumni have done. And I want to create a lot more or be part of creating a lot more of those alumni that walk out of our high school. Um, I would appreciate the opportunity to be part of the board. Thank you. Perfect. Mr. Pam. Um, <clears throat> again, thanks for uh, taking the time um, you know, for, uh, for this process. Um, and as I mentioned before, I think you know, no matter how the decision works out, it's going to be good for the uh, school district. Um, I feel very, very strongly, deeply and passionately that education is the core of anyone's, uh, anyone's life. If you don't learn about the world, you're not going to be able to enjoy it. Um, you're not going to be able to contri uh, contribute um, uh, to it. And that is everything that the East Brunswick School District uh, system stands for. I've seen it with my kids in terms of how they've uh, uh, turned out. Um, and uh, again, I just want to make a little call back uh, to my high school um, uh, where I grew up. Um, I went to my 40th uh, high school anniversary um, and saw the wonderful things that my high school had done since then. And I thought that these are all things that we can do here for sure, and many of those things we've done. I also saw the next town over, which historically did not invest in their, in their school district. It was, it, it, it was horrifying to see what had happened to their town. Um, that's the situation I want to avoid, and I'll work passionately to make sure that we do a good job here. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Singh. Thank you, everyone, for interviewing me. Um, I am a long-time resident, and I raise my kids here. Um, last year, my daughter was sitting amongst you, had the opportunity. She had a good experience, great experience. Um, I would like to follow through with um, volunteers important in our family. Uh, both my daughter, um, both my children are EMT still. Um, I like to, um, you know, throughout their bringing them up, I volunteer for Wohnsdorfer. I'm still volunteer for East Brunswick Youth Council. I'm a professional trainer, um, a CPA. I have, I believe I have something to give, and, and to give is, is the reason I'm here. Um, hopefully working with a diverse group, talented members, I will be able to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. James. Well, thank you so much again for having me here. I feel really privileged to be part of this group, and I think that I would be a good addition to the board. Um, I also have the privilege of a flexible career, so I have the time to be here. I'm not afraid to be an advocate for important issues, but I understand that this is a consensus body and I see myself as a bridge builder and a collaborator. I see myself as someone who is solutions oriented. Um, I have experience with state and local budgeting, including per pupil funding formulas as that's a facet of my professional career. And perhaps most importantly, I have a track record of volunteering in East Brunswick Public Schools and I would love to be able to show my own children and their friends um, the importance of that spirit of community volunteerism. So thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. And thank you all for being part of this important process. Following this public session, the board will recess into closed session to discuss each of the candidates. The board will not decide until the formal nomination process takes place at a public meeting. All candidates will be informed after that occurs. Mrs. Lax. Thank you so much. Um, so I have to go into the care of the cause. Do you want to be dismissed or are you welcome to, to stay? You take a re Do you want to take recess a recess or go right into the good of the cause? Just well, you know what? Actually, I'm going to make you sit there because. <laughs> <laughs> it's because. Well, I'm not going to make you sit there. Well, because you can see, because if you are selected to be on the board, this is what you will be doing. So um, this is kind of an interesting one because we do have some people out there, but some of them may be for you. Um, 
but uh, just in case, I don't want to, to take anyone else's time away from being able to speak to the board. So the Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest to protect the privacy of all students and staff. Concerns regarding individual students and staff members should be generally addressed by first meeting with the appropriate administrative staff. In order to permit the fair and orderly expression of such comment, the board to provide a period for public comment at every meeting. You are entitled to three minutes of uh, time. The board secretary does keep the clock. Um, and I always like to remind people that when you speak to the board, it is the time for the public to speak, for the board to listen. So do not take our lack of a response as not caring about the issues. Anything that needs follow up, we always tell you to make sure that you leave contact information with the ladies today in the back of the room, usually in the front. Um, that being said, is there anyone that would like to speak to the board this evening? OK. So we have an audience. That's good to know. Um, I'm going to then close the public portion um, and bring us to committee reports, information items, and for the good of the cause for the board. OK. Um, before I ask for the motion for closed session, I want to thank all of you uh, for coming out. This is a volunteer organization. And people sometimes forget that. And just the fact that you have all put the time and energy into sending us applications and being here to interview tonight. I really wish that we had six spots. Um, <laughs> the rest of the board may not feel that way right this minute. Because um, <laughs> it means they'd be out of the chairs. But um, in all sincerity, truly, I, I, I will speak on behalf of the board when I thank everyone for their time and attention. Um, it's going to be a very, very difficult discussion because you've all brought some wonderful um, assets. So I thank you all. and. Now we're going to go and discuss. So I am going to ask the board for a motion, whereas the Board of Education must discuss matters which are not appropriate for discussion in a public meeting, and these subjects are within the exceptions to the Open Public Meetings Act and are permitted to be discussed in closed session. The board intends to discuss matters as follows. Those items listed on tonight's agenda. The length of closed session is estimated to be one hour, after which the public meeting of the board shall reconvene and action will not be taken. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the East Brunswick Board of Education will recess into closed session for only the aforesaid subjects, and be it further resolved that the East Brunswick Board of Education hereby declares that its discussion of the aforesaid subjects will be made public at a time when the public's interest in disclosure is greater than any privacy or governmental interest being protected from disclosure in accordance with the Open Public so Meetings Act. Moved by Mrs. Becker. Second. Second by Mr. Hung. Is there any discussion? Oh. <laughs> Say it by the bell. Exit music. Okay, the exit music. I like that. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. Motion carries. Thank you and good night to everybody. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you so much.